Hitchens Log, Stardate 2514.9.1. Our mission, to conduct a further systems evaluation of a newly encountered artifact, the INEO AG-01 Starship eGPU docking station. We will assess its operational performance, focusing on its AMD Radeon graphics core, and determine if this device truly offers a quantum leap for gaming experiences. The INEO AG-01 Starship measures around 9.4 by 4.6 by 2.0 inches and weighs around 960 grams. We couldn't make this review without paying some special attention to the design. This is easily the best design for an eGPU docking station we have seen. Compared to the GPD and 1X player designs, it's boldly gone where no eGPU has gone before. This is the Nebula Red model and its contrasting red and black colours with silver text really stands out. The fan intakes on the side look like observation windows, and the fan exhaust, styled like twin engine nacelles, just screams for some RGB lighting which is sadly missing. The top features a pressable dial which controls the power and the performance profiles, allowing you to divert its power. You can also control the RGB lighting found around the command dial with the two buttons beside it, which switches off and on and cycles through various stellar patterns. On the bow is a covered full-size SD card slot. On the starboard side is where you can find all of the connectivity. There are two display ports, two HDMI ports, a knock link port, a USB-C port and the power port, followed by a gigabit Ethernet and USB-A port. On the hull you can find a stowaway compartment. No smuggling dodgy goods here, just a handy space for M.2 SSD and a brief look at the included 330 watts power supply. It measures around 4.72 by 3.7 by 1.1 inches and weighs around 667 grams. It comes with a plug adapter for your country or you can plug straight into the charger with a kettle lead. And included in the box are USB 4 and a branded Oculink cable so you have everything to get up and running straight away. Let's take a peek under the hood, or should we say into the engine room of this style cruiser. The main engine features the AMD Radeon RX 7600M XT GPU, running up to 2470MHz. It comes with 8 gigs of GDDR6 RAM, so you won't need to share your device's RAM anymore. You can switch the power profile between 100 watts for standard operations and 120 watts for engaging the hyperdrive, delivering increased performance with the potential cost of more heat and fan noise. With the dual HDMI and display ports, you can connect up to four monitors at a time for a true cockpit experience. Whilst performing our shakedown cruise, we also check the fan noise and temperatures. We got a high of 65 decibels and 72 degrees C, which are fairly low when compared to the GPD and One X Player GPUs. For the benchmarks, we will be comparing the performance whilst using Oculink with the INEO3, with the internal display and a 4K monitor for external. On 3D Mark, we ran the Time Spy, Night Raid, and Fire Strike benchmarks. These scores are impressive, most impressive with results of around 9,600 on Time Spy, over 50,000 on Night Raid, and around 23,000 on Fire Strike. There is a little variation between internal and external displays, but not as much as we have seen in the past compared with other setups. For Forza Horizon 5, we are running on the very low graphics settings with no FSR enabled. At 4K we see a smooth 107 frames per second. As we drop down the resolutions to 720p we see a massive 190 frames per second. The internal display also does very well, as far as an additional 26 frames per second at 720p. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider we are running on the low graphics settings with no FSR enabled. At 4K we get a slightly above average 91 frames per second. There is a nice jump in performance at 1440p and levels out around 1080 and 720p. On the internal display we lose a few frames but get the same levelling out. For Cyberpunk we are running on the low graphics settings with no FSR enabled. This demanding game only gets around 41 frames per second at 4K and we see some improvements doubling up to 93 frames per second at 720p. On the internal display we see roughly the same performance. Benchmarks are useful, but how does the ship handle in actual flight? 
Let's take a look at a cluster of games with the best graphic settings for a minimum of 60 frames per second. The amazing Claire Obscure Expedition 33 runs very well on external displays at 1440p on the medium graphic settings with some XESS upscaling. For the internal display you can increase the graphic settings to higher. Forza Horizon 5 runs great on AMD GPUs and we can easily set calls for 1080p 120Hz on the high graphic settings with no FSR needed. You could enable FSR if you wanted to and increase the graphics a little. We couldn't review the AGO1 Starship without a space themed game. In No Man's Sky you can explore the infinite worlds at 1080p ultra graphic settings, ensuring great looking visuals and smooth frame rates as you walk between systems. For Indiana Jones we are running at 1080p with a mix of medium and high graphic settings to keep the frame rate well above the 60 frames per second. For Oblivion Remastered we are running at 1080p on the high graphics with FSR unbalanced for a solid 60 plus FPS. Doom Dark Ages runs very well. At 1080p you can go right up to the Ultra Nightmare graphic settings with FSR balanced for 60 plus FPS. We will have some more gameplay footage and settings in our final thoughts up next. The INEO AGO-1 Starship has successfully completed its maiden voyage in our tests and is overall a stellar option for an eGPU. We saw excellent performance during our benchmarks and this continued into real world gameplay. Besides the performance, the standout feature is of course its out of this world design. It makes the AGO-1 a centerpiece on your desktop instead of a ominous monolith like the G1 or 1X GPUs. It's more starfly and less ball cube. As well as the powerful GPU, you also have a multitude of connectivity options with up to quad monitor support, fast ethernet and SSD storage which is always useful with handheld devices. It effectively transforms your handheld into a full-fledged battle station or productive desktop setup. Whilst there are higher performing ships patrolling the galaxy, the AGO-1 offers a more affordable alternative whilst remaining a high performance vessel for its price. It finds a sweet spot in the cosmos of eGPUs, offering an enticing package that is ready to launch your game into new heights. You can learn more about the INEO AGO-1 Starship eGPU docking station at Droix. Visit droix.co.uk or droix.net for worldwide shipping, galaxy wide coming soon. Captain's Log Final Entry We hope this report provides the crucial intel you need. If you found this week on useful, drop a like and subscribe to help our channel continue its exploration. Live long and prosper with great gaming gear.